Assalamu alaikum, my dear friends. <clears throat> Let me share with you some of the heroic scholars that we have in our community. And these are a few people that have faced the odds, that have shunned the popularity contest, and that have opted to speak the truth regardless of the results. The first one that I want to introduce to you and that I want to show you is a sheikh by the name of Sheikh Muhammad al Asi. He is a imam in Washington DC, United States. And um, in the 1980s, uh, the Saudi Arabian op uh, uh, ambassadorial staff um, kicked him out of the mosque where he was elected imam and installed a retrogressive Imam that was uh, towing the line with Saudi Arabia and with the United States uh, government and policy. And uh, this Imam Sheikh Al Asi had to make Jumat out on the pavement since that time, more than 30 years. This Imam is also the author of a massive work of translating and interpreting the Quran and this set here, this red set, is the work of Sheikh Al Asi, and uh, obviously is one of the people that have inspired me, and that I very, very uh, am a very keen follower of. Although I'm not a blind follower, I always listen to what people teach, and I do practice my own reflection. But listen to some of the thinking and the words of al -Asi. It's about a five-minute clip. Enjoy this little story or this little history that Sheikh al -Asi is clarifying. It coincidentally aligns with what we deal with on this channel. And it's going to speak about Kaab al and about the famous or infam infamous Abu Huraira. Take a listen. Ibn Sa'd's book called at tabaqat Al-Kubra It was related on the authority of Abdullah ibn Shaqiq Anna Aba Huraira jaa al-qawm yas'alu an Ka'ab Abu Huraira arrived and approached people asking about Ka'ab This is Ka'ab al-Ahbar and Kaab was within the crowd of people. Wa Kaabun fil qawm. Faqala Kaab. Kaab said. The rabbi said. Ma turidu minhu. He heard Abu Huraira asking. Where is Kaab al Ahbar? Kaab did not disclose his identity. He heard Abu Huraira. He went to him and said, What do you want from Kaab? فقال أما إني لا أعرف أحدا من أصحاب رسول الله أن يكون أحفظ لحديث رسول الله مني He says I this is Abu Huraira speaking to Ka'ab I don't know anyone who has memorized and who has preserved the Prophet's hadith more than me. And Kaab answered him, Fakala Kaab, Ama inna kalam tajib taliba shay in illa sayeshbao minhu yoman mina dahar illa taliba ilmin au taliba dunya. Kaab says to Abu Huraira that you will never find anyone seeking anything that he's going to be satisfied with what he is seeking except for he who is seeking knowledge and he who is seeking the material world. فَقَالَ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَ Then Abu Huraira said, أَنْتَ كَعَبْ Are you Kaab? فَقَالَ نَعَمْ He said, yes. فَقَالَ Abu Huraira now is speaking to Kaab. مِثْلِ هَذَا جِئْتُكْ I have come to you for this purpose. Now remember, this is a hadith that is 
with the criteria of Al Bukhari and Muslim, a Sahih Hadith. Now, this is going to be a personality. Kaab al Ahbar, the rabbi, is going to be a personality who is going to influence Abu Huraira. Let us take a look at a detail here. This is mentioned in Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad once again, and it's also quoted by a contemporary Egyptian Islamic historian or scholar by the name of Ahmad Amin in his book Fajr al-Islam. It says that Ka'ab used to present, express, communicate his lessons in the masjid. There's a person, this is, this is what is quoted in these two references that I just stated. There's a person who entered the masjid and there's another person by the name of Amir ibn Abdullah ibn Qais who was sitting down, jealous, ila kutubin. And where he was sitting, there were some books. And of course, the books that we're talking about here are not like today's books. We're not speaking like the binded and the printed and the fancy books that we have today. So place the, the word books in its historical context. وَبَيْنَهَا I'm still quoting وَبَيْنَهَا سِفْرٌ مِّنْ أَسْفَارِ التَّوْرَةِ And among these books was a chapter from the chapters of the Torah. And Kaab was reading. And if you want to be fair to the subject and review the literature, you will find a consensus among the pertinent scholars that Abu Huraira and others, not only Abu Huraira, but others also extracted some of their knowledge and quoted some of their hadiths being in... So <clears throat> what do we learn and understand from that particular clip from Sheikh Al-Asi is that uh, Abu Huraira went to search for the Jewish rabbi who became Muslim after the time of the Prophet and Abu Huraira selected him as his teacher and what we learn from that clip in which Imam Al-Asi cites very, very high level sources, Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad, Bukhari. What we learn from that clip also is that this guy, Ka'ab al Ahbar, the Jewish rabbi, who is the teacher of Abu Huraira, who is the greatest narrator of hadith, cited from Jewish Tal Talmudic rabbinic sources when he gave his opinions and his ideas. Extremely important expose and finding for any Muslim that wants to take their religion seriously. But let me move to the next um, scholar that I regard as also a true scholar. Don't agree with everything people say. Don't please mistake when I point these scholars out that I'm a blind follower of them. But what I do find from them is a sincerity and a sincerity to seek and to dig up the truth, right? And uh, the second one I want to show you is Sheikh Adnan Ibrahim. And I want to show you a clip now. This Sheikh is an imam at a mosque, I think in Vienna, in Austria. He, or he is originally from the Gaza Strip. So he's a Palestinian Sheikh. And he is highly qualified. He's got his PhD in Islamic history, and uh, he is a well-spoken Sheikh. 
He only speaks in Arabic though, so you're going to have to read the subtitles. I might give you a summary at the end of it. But listen to Sheikh Adnan Ibrahim also dealing with the same type of issue that we deal with on this channel. للأسف بلغ من سذاجتنا سذاجة المشايخ بعض المشايخ أنهم يريدون أن يصوروا للناس بما أن عارفين نفس اللعبة جيف إت أنيم أعطيه اسمه وأنا أقول لك اجعله حديثا آه يكفي أن يخرج شيء في كتاب خاصة إذا كان كتابا معتمدا لكي يظن الناس أو يرد لهم أن يظنوا أن النبي حقا كان كذلك أو فعله أو قاله ما عنديش أخين بهذا حديث أحد هذه أخي أحاديث أحد من أين لي أن النبي فعل هذا He's saying so far that people have adopted the belief that if anything is written in any Arabic book about the Prophet, anything written by any ancient Muslim, then people make the assumption that these are the words of the Prophet. Anything written in Bukhari or Muslim is assumed to be the words of the Prophet. من أين لي أنه تزوج عائشة عمرها تسع سنوات دخل بها؟ من أين لي اليقين بهذا؟ This this the example of this lie of the Prophet marrying Aisha when she was a, almost a baby, seven years old. The, the crazy belief that appears in some of the false literature. من أين لي اليقين أنه قتل أي سبعمائة أو ألف أو أكثر من اليهود في يوم واحد؟ The story that he killed a thousand Jews in one day. على الإطلاق يعني باستثناء القادة الكبار الذين خانوا. ويستحقون القتل حقيقة لكن الأطفال الصغار الذين أنبتوا لماذا يقتلون لم يحملوا سيفا ولم يستشاروا أصلا في حرب ولم يقل لهم يا أولادنا يا غلماننا نريد أن نقدر محمد له التصويت claiming that the event that people see in these books that the prophet killed a mass of people in one day is a complete fabrication and a lie لماذا يقتلهم لم يحدث هذا أنا في نظر هذا لم يحدث وقد فنتوا في أكثر من ست ساعات في محاضرة علمية تاريخية أكثر من ست ساعات بفضل الله لكن يقطعون لسانك لأن هذا مروي في البخاري كأن البخاري هو رب العالمين يا أخي لا يجوز They will cut your tongue out if you say the truth because it's written in Bukhari لو أن البخاري هو قرآن كريم Bukhari is like the Holy Quran لا تجوز ومن هنا أنا أقول سواء حمزة أو غير حمزة مبدئيا عنده الحق أن يقول كرهت بعض الأشياء في الرسول ليس في الرسول الحقيقي في الرسول الافتراضي في صورة الرسول And that is why is anti-Islamic people over the across the world, Christian evangelists. You can't blame them for saying the Prophet is subhanAllah a pedophile or he's a criminal because these false reports would make the Prophet a criminal if it would have been true. حديث الجساسة في ثلثه الأخير يقول عن مخرج الدجال من بحر الشام لا من بحر اليمن لا لا لا, لا مش الشام لا مش اليمن بل هو من قبل المشرق ما هو من قبل المشرق ما هو من قبل المشرق <تصفيق> The Hadith books are talking about the emergence of the Dajjal of the Antichrist and then they all differ from where the Antichrist will come. It shows the contradiction within these Hadith books. If this Hadith books were really Nas or revelation on a power of the Quran, there would be no contradiction in it. And the and the Prophet wouldn't be looking like he's a, a magician or a soothsayer. النبي كان يظن أنه هو الدجال يظن مسائل غير فيها ظن هذا نبي ولا كاهن أعيروني عقلكم ما هذا الكذب على رسول الله قالك لا ويتلصص النبي أخذ أي جماعة من الصحابة مع عمر وبدأ يتلصص عليه بين النخل في ضائع Another ridiculous hadith The Prophet goes and spies on Umar طيفة النخل يا سلام والنبي يحتاج لهذه الألاعيب والتلصصات what kind of prophet has this behavior? What kind of religion are you inventing? Muhammad, 
الله فهمنا والنبي فهمنا انه الصحابه هذا قتل عربد موت اخذ سرق في الجنه وهي the sahaba are all 100% perfect if you accuse anyone of stealing or kill killing somebody unjustly you are you don't dare do that they all going to heaven this spurious quality that is gifted to the to the sahaba he says, and this type of false teachings that appear in the false literature is exactly what scares and chases and drives people away from the from the deen of Allah. They want us to believe everything in these Sahih books. That's the biggest lie. <laughs> Our brains cannot take this contradiction. The lie that everything that appears in the Sahih books is 100% factual and correct and can be ascribed to the Prophet. And Sheikh Adnan Ibrahim brilliantly exposes this. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Adnan Ibrahim, I'm, I don't know him that well. I just know some of his speeches are extremely hits the uh, hits it on the nail on the head and uh, what I know is that he has an enormous following in the Arabic world hundreds of thousands of people following so alhamdulillah there is somebody that is speaking the truth clearly and getting a massive amount of people that are listening to what he has to say so the last one that I want to uh, share with you the last sheikh that I really feel inspired by is the following sheikh Hassan Farhan al-Maliki, the great Saudi scholar that has also chosen the jail cell, the jail cell, and possibly that his head be taken off his body, decapitation, rather than telling lies to the people. And he's speaking the truth about Islam and the truth about the sources, the references and the books of Islam. And he is also another scholar that I really admire. Now, Hassan, Hassan Farhan al-Maliki is in jail now. He's a Saudi scholar. He has been condemned and declared a kafir as they usually do when somebody speaks the truth, the, the great priests, uh, the Pharisees of our time. And um, he's been accused of everything. He's also been accused of being a Shia. He's been accused of being a, Yam a Houthi, a supporter of the Yemeni Houthis. And um, this sheikh is, a, is also a brave sheikh that has chosen to stand up for truth no matter what Disputing the scholars' fatwa that those who decide to, go to uh, uh, exit the deen of Islam must be killed. There is no basis for that. People, Muslims have been killed for the so-called heresy since the time of the Umayyads and the Abbasid kings. Must restore the spirit of the Quran. The Islamic Ummah has become weak in intellect and alienating of human rights. 
ولم يغلب روح القرآن لم يغلب المعرفة ولم يغلب العقل الذي أفلا تعقلون كرره الله أكثر من أفلا تؤمنون ولماذا ما في ولا كتاب عقل عبر تاريخنا كله كتاب واحد عن العقل ما إذا أخبر ب... He says that there's not one single kitab al-aql. The word aql is used so many times in the Holy Quran. The word aql is used so many times in the Holy Quran. But you won't find a chapter on aql in Bukhari or Muslim. There's, not, there's no chapter such as that in Bukhari or Muslim or any of these uh, books, so-called books of knowledge. لأنه يسر القرآن فيجب أن نصدق الله بأنه يسر ما يمكن أن نقول نعم الله قال أنه يسر بس ما نصدق هذا عيب أو حرام أو كفر إذا الله يسر القرآن للذكر لكن يجب أن نأتي القرآن متعلمين ولا نأتيه مت... Another good point We're supposed to look at the Quran as all as learners as, as fallible learners of seekers of truth not as people who are authorities on the Quran. The only authority on the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people have given themselves, they've given they've elevated themselves to the position of being the interpreters of the Quran. نستعجل ما هي على طول نريد أن نفهمها بسرعة وإلا ما ما نحتاج إليها هذا كبر في التعامل مع القرآن الكريم القرآن له أخلاق معرفة هناك منهج معرفي أخلاقي أمرك أن عندما تأتي القرآن حتى أمر رسوله لا تحرك لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه أمر بالتأني والتدبر وتقرأه على الناس على مكثن هذه آداب من لم يلتزم بها لن يفهم القرآن نعم طبعا لو لو هناك حلقات واسعة على تبين للناس عظمة القرآن وأنه نور بذاته وقران بالمناسبة هو قران كثيف جدا والذي هم بشارة قائمه وأتموا شهادة الله وما يكتم في النواة من قلبه إلى آخره هم خلو من القرآن الكريم عندهم فقط للثد إلا القراءة وقت التراويح والأجر على كل حرف عشر أمثاله بس أن لا أنكر السنة وإنما هم عندما يأتي حديث صحيح يخالف حديث أصح من يردونه بينما إذا في حديث حسن يخالف مئة آية لا يردونه مما هيس سكولز فضالز they will allow one hadith to abrogate or to cancel out the power of a hundred verses in the Quran. And this is the evil they do. I don't know what the the idea of justice in the Quran, he says here, the centrality of justice in the Quran makes it more important than salah, than prayer, fasting, or pl pilgrimage. But you don't get a kitab, a book written on justice. The, the scholars for dollars, the ancient uh, uh, clergy of the court, they never ever wrote books on justice because the kings and the sultans and the mullahs don't believe in justice really. <laughs> لأن الله جعله هدف إرسال الرسل وبعث وإنزال الكتب بينما هم لا يذكرونه ولا في كتاب عبر تاريخهم عن العدل طيب. يعني لا كتاب منفرد ولا كتاب داخل كتاب single أنا. book about justice just see that أركان الإسلام حديث نافع مولى بن عمر لم يؤخذ من القرآن يجب أن نعيد ترتيب أركان الإسلام على التحفظ كلمة ركن يعني لم يرد The so-called pillars of Islam the arkan of Islam that we learn when we are babies when we are children we learn about the pillars of Islam the word the concept the idea does not exist in the Quran the concept of the five pillars is a completely hadith based concept بهذا المعنى لكن Whereas we should be taking our pillars from the Quran, not from the Hadith. And that's why you don't find justice as a pillar of Islam. You don't find freedom as a pillar of Islam. And they kept these senseless rituals to keep the Muslims busy with themselves, fiddling with themselves every day in the mosque. 
And there's no program of justice. There's no program. And that is why they vilified the Mutazila school when they included justice in the pillars. They vilify the Mutazila because the Mutazila school is actually seeing justice as a pillar of Islam. So, Alhamdulillah, I, I just I wanted to share with you some of these these sheikhs, these uh, true leaders, these true imma uh, that are speaking truth and that are taking the consequences. And um, I I wish to say that it is my hope that uh, I would be able to have only a small percentage or a small fraction of the courage that these scholars have and the consistency with which they have executed their duty over the years. And um, I, I beseech you to look for, because we need to search out these authentic scholars and to get the truth from them. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.